The following is a Richie on Sports production. They've already knocked off the defending national champs. They're coming off a victory over the defending state champs. Now the St. Aug Purple Knights set their aspirations high as this season rolls on. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to NOLACatholicLeague.com. I'm Eric Ritchie, pleased to be joined by St. Aug head coach Cyril Crutchfield. Coach, what a year it has been already. I know you've got things on your mind that you got to take care of, but let's just, first of all, just kind of pause and take a moment to this unbelievable ride it's already been yes definitely you know the kids have put a tremendous amount of work in and we're not finished you know so we just started so hopefully we're getting better day to day and and and, and hopefully that transitions to uh friday nights the non-conference part of the schedule the not the pre-district when you're talking about the the bullets that were uh, up against you with mcdonough 35 and Carr and going back to your alma mater for the first time since 84 and playing on a friday night in covington and then of course the nationally televised victory over curtis i mean that has prepared you for this this kind of a week-to-week -week schedule in the catholic league in a big time way definitely you know and, and that old adage you know in order to be the best you got to beat the best you know so if you don't beat them you got to at least play them and, and at least use that as a measuring stick to where you're at and where you need to be and, and uh, you know my hats go out to to the group of young men that's that's a part of this team and for them to actually believe in what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish. Coach Crutchfield now in his second full season here at St. Aug after the better part of a decade coaching both Port Sulphur and South Plaquemine in that decade, Coach, 105 wins to 33 losses. You made, what, seven semifinal appearances at least, five trips to the Dome, winning three state championships. Now you come to this phase in your career, and I know, I mean, it's one extreme to the next as far as the number of roster players you have, but what's it like as you de delve into this next phase of the, of the Cyril Crutchfield career? You know, it, it, it's been great, you know. Uh, you, you know, you have your ups and downs, you know, but I think this is the place for me. This is where I, I, God intended for me to be. So however I got here, I just thank the Lord to be in this position, to uh, be a part of the St. All community, the family, the rich uh, pride and tradition that has been set uh, before, I, before I got here. And, you know, it, it's, it's been great, and hopefully we can c continue this ride. And this ride continues on Saturday against a Holy Cross Tiger team like yourselves, unbeaten in Catholic League play. Talk about the matchup with Barry Wilson's Tigers Saturday night. I know he definitely will have them ready to play. You know, uh, they actually beat us last year, you know, so and they have a lot of those young men back, you know, so um, this is definitely one of those games that, uh, you know, we had, had circled on our calendar, you know, so we'll, we'll be ready to play. And I know he'll have those guys. He does a tremendous job with his team. And uh, he's doing a tremendous job this year. And, and, and so we, we definitely uh, have to make sure that we have everything in order for us to come out with a victory. I know Holy Cross knocked you guys off last year in a hard fought battle. Ditto with Rummel, but you certainly got revenge last week in a big time way over a Jay Roth team. What did you and Coach Roth talk about there? You guys now, after the handshake, you guys, I mean, both fans of each other's programs, uh, definitely mutual respect, but I, I was right next to you guys. You guys talked for a long time. What did you guys talk about? Well, you, you know, it was strange. You know, uh, I went over there to hug him just to tell him how impressed, you know, I was with his ball club. And before I can get out, you know, he grabbed me. He said, uh, he said, uh, you know, y'all playing tremendously sound defense. He said, fundamentally sound. He said, no, that's going to make all the difference in the world. You know, and, and for, for him to say that, you know, really that's something that really just, um, that, I, that I'll take with me for the rest of my life because when I look at his program, the one thing that I see is discipline. The one thing I see is fundamentally sound and technique savvy. You know, so for him to say that, you know, about the defense, uh, you know, really kind of, you know, made me take a step back and say, man, maybe we're trying to do things right and stepping in the right direction. You know, and, and likewise, I finally got to say what I had to say. And, and, and what I told him was that when I look at his ball club with the amount of people that he lost on defense and offense, and for him to put up, you know, and coach those 
guys that probably didn't have a lot of experience, then that that really we can all coach Leonard Fournette. You know, but can we coach those guys that after Leonard Fournette leave or yeah. Damian Williams or, or the big kid that played the, the Carter kid that played tight end and, and you don't skip a beat, you know, and, and that's what he's done. You know, uh he, he, he has a tremendous uh program and, 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 and that's why he, he wins like he does. Time for us to show the highlights of St. Aug's victory over Rummel. It was a hard-fought game at Joe Yanni Stadium. We're going to let Coach Crutchfield get back to practice. And a couple of the names that he just brought up, Leonard Fournette, quarterback Toy Jackson, will join us right here as we go ahead and roll those highlights. Homecoming for Rummel on a cool, breezy day at Joe Yanni Stadium, Alexa Accardo named homecoming queen. On the field, tremendous Catholic League showdown between last year's 5A state champs and St. Aug, the current top-ranked team in 5A. Rummel realizes that the Purple Knights are not simply the Leonard Fournette show. A passing attack of wide receiver Stanley Morgan and quarterback Toy Jackson has been a major part of the arsenal. And in the first quarter, already up 7-0, the passing tandem connects on a seam route and Morgan breaks free. And no one's going to catch him. 88 yards for the score, and St. Aug had built a quick 14-0 lead. Defensively, St. Aug shutting down Rummel early on. Peter Woolard with the sack of Chase Forcade, and Woolard showing the emotion and intensity this game brought out. St. Aug back on offense now, and Jackson back to doing his thing. Going to the air, this time tight end Charles Jones, and just like that, St. Aug back in business. That play led to a Leonard Fournette touchdown as he barrels in from seven yards out and the Purple Knights had taken a 21-0 lead. But this Raiders team is full of grit. Rummel answering with a touchdown of their own 4K to Steven Dunbar, 18 yards and it's 21-7. That's the way it stood all the way to the break. Opening kick of the second half and look at this, Justin Moraine, perfect bounce and Andre Tolliver recovers the onside kick and in shocking fashion, Rummel had shifted the mojo. Marching down the field, Rummel would score. Israel Tucker dives in from seven yards out and it's a 21-14 game. Now it's time for St. Aug to answer and the Purple Knights respond and respond they did. Toy Jackson, he's a dual threat quarterback. Watch him chew up yardage through the teeth of the Raiders defense. Then, from the five-yard line, Jackson fires across the middle, Jones there for the catch and the touchdown. Special teams a big part of this game, and in such a tight game, little things magnified on the extra point. How about the fantastic hold by St. Aug's Greg Holmes? Tremendous effort to get the ball down in time for Zachary Nelson's kick, which was good, and once again, St. Aug had a 14-point lead. A blocked punt return for a score put Rummel to within seven, but time had all but run out. Cyril Crutchfield sends Fournette in on defense for the last play of the game in the prevent, and he's glad he did. The desperation he was picked off by who else? Fournette like a center fielder. He proceeded to weave his way through the Rummel offense. 72 yards later, he was into the end zone, putting the exclamation point on a 35-21 win over Rummel. This is Robert Namer. Hot talk can only be cooled by an affordable, refreshing backyard resort from Blue Haven Pools and Spas. Since 1954, the number one choice for building a new pool or existing pool remodeling and service. World's largest, best quality, best warranty, best price. Blue Haven Pools, certified pool designers, fully insured and rated. For health, entertainment, and recreation, visit bluehaven.com. That's bluehaven.com. Welcome back to NolaCatholicLeague.com. Eric Ritchie, pleased to be joined by Leonard Fournette, one of the top recruits in the land. Forget about the Catholic League in the state. We're talking about the U.S. of A. Leonard, first of all, thanks for being with us, man. What's this year been like for you? Everybody wants to know about what's next for you, but you got business at hand, and you've been taking care of it pretty well. Uh, right now, um, you know, I'm in the Catholic League right now, and as you know, a lot of great teams are playing against the Jesuits, Archbishop Roman, Brother Martin, and Holy Cross right now. 
we're focusing on all the cross right now. Undefeated, I think one of the undefeated teams in New Orleans right now. Yes. And they're a great team, great coaching. They're a well-disciplined team. So we just getting prepared for them and doing the little things to take to get this W against them. I know you guys have such big aspirations, Leonard. But I know you brought up the Catholic League, and obviously that's what this website and TV show is all about. Our guy Ronald Ricardo, he's been a historian for years. He's been doing the the all uh, Catholic League teams for years. He just put together the all Catholic League team from all generations and you made it as one of the running backs and I know I mean that's that's quite an honor when you think of all the great runners that have been not only at your school at St. Aug but uh, in the Catholic League itself. Oh uh, I know that's a big achievement but right now um, it's not just not it's, I didn't get that my team helped me to get the blocking for me they know they're doing the right things to get me where I need to be and I have to show love back and do the right things for them block for them you know, the discipline and uh, mentioning names because it's not a no I in team. And I appreciate my team for helping me this, all these years. I know you said the exact same thing right after the game with Rumble this past Saturday. And I know a couple of years of frustrations. You have to take it back to your freshman year before you tasted victory against those Rumble Raiders. And what a matchup that was. And, man, are you kidding me with the way this game ended? Unbelievable, huh? Uh, coach told me, um, no play safety. And they was going to throw the ball deep. And then if you get it, catch it. And they told me to fall down, fall down with the ball. But you know, I seen nobody right there, so I decided to take the ball and run for a touchdown. <laughs> and you did, indeed, you did. Now you've knocked off not only the defending state champs and the Catholic League champs, but you've knocked off the defending national champs. Of course, the Herculean effort against Curtis and has been well documented, nationally televised. The country got to see Leonard. What we've been seeing for four years. What was it like to play on national TV and to knock off Curtis the way you did? Oh, uh, you know, my first time on national TV or well, on ESPN. Period. And yes. And that whole week, our team was just bonding so well. And when we came out the tunnel, and when the game started, it's like the game was going kind of slow. So it, it was okay. a kind of it was kind of different for us. And all the hard work we put in during the week, you know, running laps and just putting extra work in in the, um, in the weight room. And you know, John Kerry has a great team. I mean, <laughs> one of the best teams I played. I think my my entire year of high school, uh, Kenny Young, great linebacker. Yep. Hunter Dell, yep. great safety. Um, but it was a good it was a good matchup, and um, I appreciate them for giving us the you know the time of the day, even much the centers on their schedule. Yeah. And it was a great great game, and um. I think it's one to be remembered. I mean, our viewers right now are just kind of getting the uh, the feel of what you know this guy has been all about. And I know you're well grounded with your father, even your younger brother on this football team. But what is it like, Leonard, when when you hear all these things, all this talk, the the LeBron James of high school football, the next Adrian Peterson, even after the win against Curtis, Little Wayne tweeted out, Leonard Fournette is the truth. What's all that publicity like for you? Oh, uh, you know, uh, it's for the moment. You know, I, I think everything for the moment because. You know, there's much great things in store for me in life. And my parents always told me, you know, stay humble and keep God first. And as, uh, as you see, I've been doing it since my ninth grade, yeah. And that's what I'm trying to continue doing and, and you know, pray to God that he give me wisdom and that I stay on the right path. The Under Armour All-American game in St. Petersburg in January, that's where you're going to make your make decision. decision yes, make sir. your decision. Where is the process now? Do you have in the back of your mind, and I, you're not going to reveal it to us, I get that, but do you have in the back of mind, is there a leader in the front? or what, What's it like? Where, where is it at? Truth, uh, I, I haven't been really been focusing on college or my decision right now. Um, just my time my time is coming up with my team, you know, people I've been growing up growing with since I was young, so I'm trying to spend as much time with them and focus on my team. When that decision does come up, what's going to be the biggest uh, influence to make your decision? What What is going to be the right spot for Leonard Fournette? Uh, right now, well, since I was young, academics been first with my mother and my parents. You know, academics first, make sure, you know, football is going to take care of itself. Mm -hmm. Football is my backup plan. Mm -hmm. It's not going to last forever. Your mind, your mind is not, and your body's not. So it's where I feel comfortable at. You know, it might not be LSU or Alabama. It could be somewhere else. And it's somewhere I feel home and close at. Last question for you as far as uh, this matchup this Friday night with an undefeated Holy Cross Tigers it's team. Saturday. We're playing Saturday. Yeah. This matchup this weekend, Leonard, tell me about the matchup. And right now, I mean, both of you guys undefeated in Catholic League play. Uh, you know, you can't underestimate no one. You know, last year we did that, and, you know, they beat us. So right now we're kind of seeking for revenge because last year we, 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 we knew we could have beat them, but we mm -hmm. took them lightly. And mm -hmm. that's on our part. And that's why this year, as you see, we're not we're not taking anyone lightly this year. And just come out full speed, 100%. Do the little things right as we, as we continue to do. And 
when this, when this game is coming up. Well, I know I speak for all the, the people that follow the Catholic League and New Orleans football in general. Man, best of luck to you down the road. Thanks. Good luck. We're all pulling for you, buddy. Appreciate that. As we go to break, we're going to show highlights of Leonard's upcoming opponent. And yes, Saturday's when they play. But this past weekend, it was on Friday, when Holy Cross took on Brother Martin. Catholic League showdown Friday at Dad Gormley. Visiting Holy Cross, unbeaten and state ranked, facing Brother Martin. Looking to enter the win column in the Catholic League for the first time this season. Crusaders would be in for another challenge on this night. Todd Spriggins gets the scoring underway for Holy Cross, wrapping up a 10-play drive with the one-yard touchdown run. That gave Holy Cross a 7-0 lead. Minutes later, James Tabery adds to that lead. Long pass to Jason Avide. He does the rest. And just like that, Holy Cross led this one 14-zip. Like they have all season, though, Brother Martin would respond, especially on homecoming. This team is tough and showed it again. Jake Brogy inside the five, little swing pass to Bryce Johnston. He's into the end zone, and the Crusaders are on the board. Second quarter now where defense was the story the rest of the half. Teams went back and forth, starting with this Holy Cross interception. That's Joel Dullery. This young man played well all over the field this night. But Brother Martin, they had some defense as well. Jared DeJarlamo and Brendan Hayes combining on the sack. Holy Cross, Zachary Harris. This guy's a force. The tackle for loss with authority. Brother Martin, Rod Teamer, Raphael DeRoach converge on the screen pass. That play's going nowhere. So we're headed to the half with Holy Cross still on top, 14-7. Third quarter, Brother Martin would strike first. Brogy, plenty of time, looking, throwing, and finding. Vincent Duwe, that's a 47-yard touchdown, and we're all tied at 14. Defensively, the Crusaders making plays. Got to show you this sack from Nick Williams coming from the blind side, the fumble, and Brother Martin recovers. But on this night, there was no answer for Tabari to Michael Chigbu. This long game set up another Holy Cross touchdown for Chigbu, seven receptions, 135 yards. It was 21-14 Tigers, but not for long. Brother Martin would answer off the pitch, and it's Johnston into the end zone, and we were tied once again. Later in the fourth quarter, it's that tandem again. Chigbu on the receiving end of a 65-yard touchdown. That put Holy Cross up 28-21 and put this game in the hands of the Tigers' defense. Less than two minutes remaining, they respond. Fumble on the play, loose ball. At the bottom of that pile is Holy Cross defensive lineman Kevin Durr. That sealed the win. Holy Cross beats Brother Martin the final 28-21. That's what we need, and we got it, and we kept back <laughs> giving us a turnover, and we got it at the right time, and they did one heck of a job getting it, and I tell you what, defensively, they played hard, but hey, Brother Martin's got a good football team, and, well, they, shut you down and, they, game, and they, huh? really, they really played aggressive up front, they did a great job. Now that we're in the offseason, it's a good time to call Cajun Comfort for great deals on air conditioning, on electrical, and whole house generators. Cajun Comfort, it's what satisfaction supposed to feel like. Welcome back to NOLACatholicLeague.com. I'm Eric Ritchie, pleased to be joined by St. Aug quarterback Toy Jackson. Toy, what a year it's been already. Thanks so much for being on the show. What's this ride been like this season where you guys have already knocked off the likes of Curtis and uh, this past week you knocked off Rummel? No, you know, it's been a good ride so far. You know, we still feel as though we need to get better as a team, you know, and we're pushing every day, you know, to get better. We push, you know, one, each other, one another, you know, every day, you know, just to get better and better. This past game against Rummel, you guys shot out to a 21 nothing lead. I know you score early, you hit your tight end to set up another touchdown pass. What was it like to jump out on front early against a, a Rummel team that has given you guys fits the last couple of years? You know, we studied film a lot, you know, we played them, you know, Coach Day, Coach Day, you know, we had to put our foot on their neck and keep it on their neck. So, you know, we played good the first half, you know, we played pretty good, but overall it was a good victory. Toy, again, it doesn't get any easier. They call this the SEC West of high school football. Each and every week, another powerhouse. Now another undefeated state-ranked team is staring you in the face on Saturday with Holy Cross. Talk about that matchup with the Tigers. Well, you know, it's very competitive in the Catholic League. You know, you know, we know Holy Cross is a very competitive team. You know, you know they're 7-0 for a reason. So, 
I was just looking forward to Saturday night. It's been fun watching you throughout this season as well. With the, with the, you know, you got those good receivers and and uh, Stanley Morgan. I know is the guy that keeps showing up in the highlights with you guys. I know you got other ones, Marlon Watts and those guys. You're tight end, but tell me about the combination that you have with Stanley Morgan. You know, in the summer, you know, that's where it starts. You know, it all starts in the summer, and it starts with our offensive line. So, you know, without my offensive line, I wouldn't be able to make those, you know, throws. And you know, they make outstanding catches. So. I give credit to those guys. You've been on national TV this year and you're getting a ton of attention every time you guys go out. And obviously Leonard Fournette in the backfield is, is getting so much of this attention. What is it like as a quarterback to have number five in the backfield with you? You know, it feels good, you know, to have you know, the number one player behind me. You know, I've been playing with Leonard since I was in sixth grade. You know, he's a leader on and off the field. He's a tremendous kid, you know, we just love him. What's this whole thing been like for him? This ride been like for him? And you as teammates being so close to him and dear friends with him, how, how has he handled this, this this last year in your eyes? Uh, you know, he handled it pretty well. You know, he don't let the hype get to him. He just act like a, you know, a normal kid. So, you know, we still hang out, go to the movies, play games, and, you know, he's a good kid. One thing you want people to know about Toy Jackson, I just found out, a baseball player, a good baseball player, a solid shortstop, bats in the three hole for the Purple Knights and the baseball team. Tell me about your love and uh, and your talent on the baseball field as well. You know, baseball is, you know, I love baseball a lot, you know. But, you know, I'm looking forward to this baseball season, but, you know, I have to get a state championship run first. That's it. That's it. The, the goals are high, but when push comes to shove, when it comes time to play college athletics, baseball, you think, is the way you're headed? Yeah, baseball, I think that's where I'm headed. Well, he definitely has the arm to play shortstop. We do know that. As we take a break and here on NolaCatholicLeague.com, highlights now from a big matchup between Shaw and Jesuit. Both coaches Scott Bainsfather and Wade Kaiser trying to get their teams back to their winning ways. Jesuit rule using the ground game to their advantage with the combination of Charles Jackson and Mike McMahon. Jesuit got to the short 15 yard line, but they couldn't go any further. Jesuit Charles Jackson trying to get a run in for a first down, but Charles Aubrey Powell and Joseph Prevost making a huge stop, forcing a field goal for Jesuit. Kicker Kuz Jacobs kicks a 30 yard field goal up and through. 3 nothing Jesuit. The Blue Jays, most of the first half, took a lot of time off the clock. They melted at least over 20 minutes off the clock on drives various in the first half. The Blue Jays went on a 17 play, 68 yard drive, and Mike McMahon puts it in for the touchdown. 10 nothing Blue Jays. Archbishop Shaw bounces back before the end of the first half. Starting off with a kickoff return by Cedric Cooper, 47 yards down to their own 48 yard line. The Eagles decided to use a remedy on offense that would help them on the drive, and that's running back Trey Regis. Regis gets some good carries, grinding it out and moving the ball for the Eagles. And also putting Gibson making some big connections. And he made a huge connection as he found Jordan Ortega for a two yard touchdown as the Blue Jays lead the Eagles 10 to seven at the half. The Eagles are driving little by little in the second half and they took advantage of a nice drive as Peyton DeFore hits a 32 yard field goal to tie the score at 10. Things got really dicey the rest of the way. Jesuit took the ball 80 yards on 18 plays and Charles Jackson gets it in four yards out for a touchdown to start the fourth quarter and Jesuit takes the lead back 17 to 10. The Shaw Eagles answers with a 10 play 75 yard drive. Quinn Gibson connects to Brandon Falcon on a nice play action pass and they're down to the Shaw 15 yard line. Gibson finds his favorite target, Falcon, for a seven yard touchdown. The score is tied 17 apiece. Judgment was in a familiar position as the game was tied, having a ball with 5 3 left, and they decided to execute like they do. Quarterback Trey LaForge set the tone 
play action pass, and he connects to Foster Moreau for a 26 yard reception down to the short 20 yard line. Jesuit decide to go back to their workhorse. Charles Jackson takes it in for a two yard touchdown, but Blue Jays lead 24 to 17, 158 left in the game. The Shaw Eagles had one more shot to tie the ball game. They started their drive from the 35-yard line. Quentin Gibson connects to Trey Regis for an eight-yard gain. In a key play, Gibson back to pass. He was looking, and Brad Davis from Jesuit gets a huge sack with 1.22 left. A huge fourth down came up for Shaw. Fourth and four, Gibson connects to Bryson Simmons for the first down. Continuing the drive, Gibson connects to Simmons on a third and four. 19 seconds left, Gibson scrambling, looking all over the place. He throws it down the middle of the field. Cameron Truxler with the catch at the Jesuit 21 yard line. Bread, a piece of laundry on the field. It's a holding penalty on the Shaw Eagles, which had to push him back. And it came down to the last play of the game. Three seconds left. Back to pass, Gibson, Gibson going to the right, looking and looking. Heaves it down the field, Hail Mary, but the Blue Jays knock it down. Judgewood gets their first Catholic League win of the season, 24 to 17 over Archbishop Shaw. It's the Catholic League. You know, it's a physical game played by physical people, and, and, and it's the Catholic League. Everybody's got everybody's got injuries, everybody's dealing with injuries, and, and it's it's the next man up theory, and, and guys, you gotta get ready to play in your twos and threes, and those are the teams that really come out on top in the Catholic League. Charles Jackson led the Blue Jays with 32 carries, 136 yards, and two touchdowns. He stepped up in a big game when the Blue Jays needed it. The alignment did a great job on the last drive to go in. And on the last touchdown, the four offensive linemen in front of me, they just pushed in. I just had to run the ball in. And we did come out dragging uh, a little bit in the first half. And Coach challenged us in the locker room. So it was a pivotal point in our season and the rest of our lives. And we came out and we had to answer. Quentin Gibson had a real good game for the Shaw Eagles. He was 14 of 18 for 163 yards and two touchdowns. Trey Vegas had 22 carries for 105 yards. We played very hard and very proud of our guys for playing hard. We probably made a few too many mistakes, had a few too many penalties, uh, and we didn't get off the field on third down. You know, and I think that gave uh, you know Jesuit the ability to get, to, to get that last score and, and you know ultimately win the game. Now that we're in the off season, it's a good time to call Cajun Comfort for great deals on air conditioning, on electrical, and whole house generators. Cajun Comfort, it's what satisfaction's supposed to feel like. Welcome back to NolaCatholicLeague.com. Eric Ritchie alongside Coach Crutchfield. We're out here at Pontchartrain Park as the Purple Knights prepare for Holy Cross. Before we look ahead, I want to look back a little bit. And again, I moved to New Orleans for a second time back in 07, just in time for your run at South Plaquemine. I read the book. Uh, the Hurricanes and unbelievable your experience. I always wanted to hear your side of the story. The, my favorite part was when I read when you stayed for the for the hurricane at Port Sulphur. The water you're in the gym. The water's coming up, and there is your state championship trophy from 2002 floating. There's snakes in this water, and your big phobia is snakes. Give me the story in your eyes. I read it. I want to hear it. It's just something that, uh, you know, all my kids, uh, they know one thing I don't like is snakes. And uh, just to be in, in that type of turmoil and just to be in that position, uh, you know, you're actually just operating on on whatever, you know. So to know what is in the, in, in the water and what's not in the water, but to see that state championship trophy, that's it's, it's something that's meaningful to me, to the program. So it, it wasn't a second thought. So I jumped in and uh, I had to get it out of the water. Now it wasn't until actually, actually I got out of the water, I finally like, wow, what did I just do? <laughs> you know, if I'd actually thought it out, you know, who's telling, who, who, who knows? 
where that trophy would be right now. And I know in the next hurricane that comes to New Orleans, you're not sticking around. No doubt about it. I'm going. You talked about that state championship trophy. He's got three right now, Coach Crutchfield. The same amount as a legend here at St. Aug, Otis Washington, who won three in a five-year span. But the last state championship trophy won here at St. Aug in the football field, 1979. Talk, if you would, about two things. Coach Washington, who was part of the hiring process to get you on here at St. Aug, but two, your aspirations to get a fourth. Well, you know, um, you, you're right. Well, Coach Walsh, he's he's a person that I really look up to. You know, coming up, uh, growing up in the '70s. Um, actually, my first sight of Coach Walsh was actually 1975 at Strawberry Stadium. Uh, I'm a Covington grad, so Covington's playing the state championship in who? Against St. Augustine. Saint you Gatch. know, so I didn't really like him then. You know, but uh, he 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 you know, did a tremendous job in a short period of time and speaks volumes of the type of person he is, the character, and the type of pro program that he that he ran here at St. Augustine. And, uh, you know, so he, he he's definitely someone that's on the radar. Now, for us, uh, what was the other question? I'm sorry. Getting a fourth state championship. Okay, uh, fourth state championship, that's our goal. You know, uh, you know, some people talk about how many games they want to win, district championship all that stuff is going to take care of itself you know and, and from day one the one the one message that i preach and and I, i'm glad to hear it now the kids talking about it all the time was i always tell them i really don't care how many games we win i don't care if we 15 and 0 or we're six and nine as long as that six win is is the 15th game and that's the state championship then we're, we're satisfied with that because you know that that's that's our goal now you know what we do um, everybody's not going to reach their goal, you know, but at that time, if you reach a goal, then, hey, you were successful. If you didn't reach a goal, then now it's time to look back and say, okay, well, we won X amount of games. We won a district championship, but our goal is to win the state championship, and that's the way we practice. That's the way we prepare mentally, and that's the way we prepare in the off season. And, 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 and you know, make no bones about it. We won't win the state championship. They're the top-ranked 5A team in the state of Louisiana right now, and it's certainly been a fun ride to this point, and it's going to be fun the rest of the way. We're going to be right along with you, Coach. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Cyril Crutchfield in a tremendous St. Aug program here. Wish them the best of luck this week in their battle against Holy Cross. Uh, as we say goodbye, a new feature to the program. We, we close out the show, Coach, with a photo finish. That's all for NolaCatholicLeague.com. <laughs>